So you open Google Chrome on your phone. You're rushing to buy tickets to a concert that all your friends are going to. Picture yourself now. Crowd surfing to the front, being invited onto the stage, backstage the world tour, and before you know it, you're dancing in Tokyo. Wait, what? Three tickets left? It's a good thing your saved payment details autofill quickly and securely. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. Hey, what's up? It's the Man Fuse Podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, your host, my co host, Ben H., real estate broker, team builder. So today on the Man Fuse Podcast, we're going to talk about spring break. Ben went one way. I went another. How our spring breaks were totally different. And this is the first time I went back to an area where I partied at as a teenager. But now I'm a damn adult with kids. And not only did I feel like the old guy, I kind of acted like the old guy too. I'll explain how. All right, spring break, 2023. 2023, everybody was at the coastline. You went your way, Ben. I did. I went my way. Same now, coastline. Same coastline. 100 miles apart. Totally different experience. Completely different. Right. Now, to preface this, we both were in need of some time off. For sure. You had your grind going. I had my grind going. Yes. And it was a grind just to be able to get that week off. Yeah. And so, you know, you pulled your family, your boat, you brought the crew, you went and hung with your parents at yeah. in Tallahassee, right? South of Tallahassee. South yeah. of Tallahassee. Yeah. Your parents have a nice little cottage nice on the little, water. Yeah, nice little how two much, bedroom. Uh, so the house is real small, right? It's a two bedroom house. Relatively small. Relatively yeah. small. I'm not diminishing. No, it, it's, it's a, on the fucking water. No, it's a it's a two bedroom, two bath, concrete block house that was built in the 50s. One story, right? One story. It's just it's very simple. Uh the front of the home is the it has a big kitchen and a big uh living room with a dining room all open. And then the back side of the home on either corner are two same size bedrooms and in between those bedrooms are two bathrooms in between. Right? So I mean, it's a very simple house. Right. But just does, a square. it has a nice spread of land between the water yeah. I mean, from pictures, it looks that way. I it don't know. Sits if it... On, it sits on an acre on the Gulf of Mexico that's a long, skinny acre. And it's only 30 uh, or 45 feet wide, but it goes way into the ocean. Now, the cool thing about it is that as this lot shoots out into the ocean, the ones to the right of it, if you're facing the water, do not. That's park national park next to us oh very cool. on the water so we're sitting up in uh next to the park the rest of the homes are sitting back where those lots are which are still beachfront lots but they have their walkways that come down through the park but they can't build anything there they can just have a little walk so you're technically grandfathered in kind of yeah yeah so our lot basically is on the fucking our house is like on the beach um now when you you put your boat in the water. Yeah. Do you have, you can't put your boat in the water at your parents' house, can you? No, it's too shallow out in front. So do you park your boat in front of your yeah. parents' house? Yeah, there's a buoy. So a buoy works. You put a chain. You anchor a chain to the ocean floor. And we can get into how you do that. But you anchor a chain to an ocean floor. You have to drill it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then the chain comes up to a floating buoy. ball that has a hook on it or a loop on it that you can hook your boat to. That's called a buoy. It sits there and floats. Right. And so that, you know, you hook your boat to it, the the anchor and the chain holds your boat where it's supposed to be. Now, do you have a dock in order to get access to your boat, or you have to walk in the water? You have to boat? walk in the water. And so yeah. how deep is that water? Not deep, man. It's only, you know, at high tide, um, chest deep, okay. all the way out to the boat. So, you can, so you can walk out to your at boat. At low tide, it's it's there's there's no water. I mean, it's sandbar. And so, Until you get to the boat, and then that's only about, I don't know, knee deep. It's incredible. Yeah. There's nothing like I've never seen anything like it. The closest thing I've seen is like, um, I mean, there's a lot of bays and stuff like that. But find me a beach where you can have your house on the beach 
and your boat anchored out in front of your house on the beach. I mean, it's it's yeah, because most people, even the big homes, a lot of times have the dock and sure. their boat, but there's no beach. There's no beach. It's a bay. That's in a bay. You know so what I mean? So you actually have sand. White sand. Beach. Yeah. So you lay out right on the beach? Lay out on the beach. Wow. Gulf of Mexico. It's pretty special, man. And um, and the water's clear there? Ish. It's not like where you were. It's not like Destin. I mean, the water's more of a golden color because it's shallower water. The um, Kind of brackish? Yeah, it's a little brackish. It's shallower. Where you were is very close to deep water. There's a drop off right there. And that's where you get the blue water is from is from the really deep water. And so that's why like all all along where you guys are is more blue until you get to about, I don't know, Mexico Beach and then it turns kind of brownish, gold, whatever. My family. Yeah. Um, it was my wife's fortieth birthday, and us and another couple, yeah, got a badass house. Yes. On 30A, now 30A is a long stretch, there's a lot of different beaches, but we were in Seagrove, right next to Seaside, around Watercolor. Which is an awesome area. You take a right off of our street, and we were about a mile from downtown Seaside, Bud and Alley's. Seaside is where the movie The Truman Show was filmed, which is just, everything's kind of picturesque. It's perfect, yeah. And so, the house we got was dope as fuck. Yeah. It had its own pool. Everything was white. It was decked out. Modern. Oh, it was so modern, and it was... Yeah, I saw uh, pictures, man. It it looked pretty sick. The pool was amazing. The outdoor area was amazing. We spent every day on the beach. Our relationship with the people that we shared the place with was great. Kids got along great. But it has been probably since I was 19 years old, 18, going to Panama City, going to Club La Vila, going to Spinnaker's, going to those like fuck clubs where it's just debauchery, bumping down the Panama City Beach Strip. I remember it, yeah. So you and I went there for your bachelor party. Right. When that's, you know. We rode a banana. We rode a big banana. Yeah. A yellow banana. Like six or seven of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the jet ski that was pulling us was trying to do his best to it was toss awesome. us ass, yeah. toss our asses off. It was amazing. And we, we did pretty fucking good. Yeah. I was the only one that didn't get kicked off. But I thought I was the only one that did fall off. No, your brother fell off. Oh, okay. And who else was on there with us? D. Yeah. D fell off. Yeah. Was Leon there? Yeah. Leon was there. His ass fell off. Yeah, but I remember us going to the left, yeah. all screaming like we were in tandem, like just like following, like, you know. We did really good for a while. Dude, he was having trouble, but he eventually got us. So when we went for your bachelor party, it wasn't spring break. And I have not experienced teenagers on spring break since yeah. I was a teenager. And it was fucking crazy. I felt like the old dude. I'm right. like, really? A bunch of punk ass kids right. at, on bicycles. There are like fourteen year olds driving golf carts down the street. Yeah. Everyone bumping like the gangster rap music. Yeah. I mean, like kids that were 14, 15. It was bananas. So first off, where you had peace and quiet, as you said, if you saw someone on the beach, you're like, oh, who's that? Yeah, dude. If if you see somebody walk past the beach house or the beach, you're like, oh, cool. Hey, who who's that? Who? And you know, you typically know them or you say hi to them or whatever. Your dog runs up to them. Dogs are completely fine. Right. You know, the dog's out in the water chasing balls. Definitely chill. But out there, I mean, no gas station or store or nothing for 10 miles. You guys go out to eat? Our buddy Jason, um, Shannon, who... Um whose family owns a bison farm. Yeah. Um, shout out to Jason and his family. For sure. Cool and ass bison dude. Farm. And he works for a pretty big company. He's a he's a beast. I'm not calling you out, Jason. But Jason came with his own Pinterest board already set up of all the meals he was going to no cook. No way. He lo- he's a good cook. He loves to cook. That's and awesome. And he was ready. So, you know, everything down there is so jacked up and overpriced. I mean, like, eating out is ridiculous. Like, we ate out a few times, and it was like 350 bucks every time we ate out. Yeah. It was absolutely bananas. Right. He ordered a margarita at Bud and Alley's, and it wasn't like a big vase of margarita. Right. It was a cup. Yeah. Like a small Dixie cup. Yeah. $30 for a fucking margarita. Where? 
at Bud and Alley's. It was 30 bucks for a mark? 30 bucks for dude. a margarita, dude. And yeah. I'm not talking, and it was a cup. I it know, was like yeah. a, it, it was like a solo cup. Yeah, yeah. 30 bucks. And That's his nuts. wife's like, did you look at the fucking price of that before you bought it? He's like, no, I don't ever look at the price. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, so we ate out a few times. Yeah. We had Bud and Alley's for lunch, but. We cooked a lot of great That's meals. That's good. He, you know, he cooked, I cleaned, whatever you want. You know, we ate at this place called 30A Amigos. It was this really good Mexican restaurant. Nice. Kristen from The Burt Show, her yeah. and her family were down there. We met cool. them for dinner, and then they came over to the house the next night. Nice. But there was some drama. And there I was felt drama. There, there was drama. Now, okay. there were a few points where Jason and I felt like the old guys. The house we rented had four bikes. That yeah, came with it. And right. we and Jason and I would go out in the morning, we'd bike 10 miles right. just as a workout. Yeah. Well, Aaron, my wife, and her friend Lauren, uh, Jason's wife, they would go out on their little excursions, sometimes at night, which was completely dangerous yes. because it's dark as shit. These kids are going all different right. directions. You can't see shit. Yeah. There's no reflectors. There's no lights. Nothing. And they, these teenagers were cussing them out. Wow. Like, get out of the way, you fucking moms. That's and hilarious. And my wife's like, I'm going to beat someone's ass. The kids were yelling that? Bunch of moms, get out of the fucking way. Dang. You know, being disrespectful. Now, Jason and I, both tattooed. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I, I look mean or, or but yeah. no one fucked with us. Yeah. Until. Until they did. I kind of instigated. Oh, okay. So the scene was we all walked down to downtown Seaside from our place, which with all our kids, because it's you can't park there. We didn't have a golf cart and there's no reason to drive. Right. Um, and if you've never been to downtown Seaside, you know, it's got this like kind of green area with like an amphitheater where, you know, concerts yeah. can play. And then there are food trucks all around that little square and a bunch of cool stores, yeah. not cheap stores no. either, pretty high end stores. Right. Well, there was one building, it was above a women's store and my wife had gone in there and there was nothing in this store that was like under 300 bucks. There was an apartment upstairs with a deck where there were a bunch of teenagers. And Jason and I are walking, and the wives are in a store doing whatever. And Jason and I have most of the smaller kids, and we're walking, and I see these assholes up above hanging off the balcony. Right. Yelling down at all the teenage girls. Yeah. Pretty inappropriate. And, I mean, catcalling is one thing, like, hey, but, like, you know, show us your tits. Look at those tits. Yeah. Oh, you know, and I'm like, okay, my kids are right here. That's kind of pissing me off right, right off the bat. Right. And then some of the girls are like looking at him like some of the girls are talking back to him and like, hey. And then some of them are like, Ugh. we're not in front of the building anymore. We're kind of off to the side, but I'm watching them. And there are a couple of these punk ass kids that are spitting on the people. Oh, no. Below. Dang. And now I'm getting a little pissed off. And not that they're spitting on me. Right. But that's, yeah, that's pretty nasty. fucking disrespectful. That's nasty. Don't be throwing shit. And I saw yeah. him throw. I don't even know what he was throwing. And it's not just teenagers. It's grownups. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, this is kind of pissing me off. And I'm sitting there and I'm staring at him. And then in between the buildings is this like kind of like this round, like, you know, it's like a like curved like area you walk through. Right. And I see a sheriff. Like, kind of behind on the other side of the building. And as I'm like, you know what, Jason, watch my kids. Because, you know, it's I, me cussing at them from right. down here. Probably ain't going to do anything except yeah. intimidate. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go fucking narc on them. I'm going to yeah. go fucking tell. Yeah. So as I'm walking up to the sheriff, it's a young sheriff. He's got his ASP, an ASP baton out, which is like, it looks like a... a a foam handle, yeah. but you sling it and this big metal pole comes out. Yeah. You could really render someone you unconscious. Yeah. You fuck someone up. Well, he's sharing it and showing it off to the valet guys. Wow. So they're kind of just dicking around. Yeah. And so as I'm walking up to him, I go, excuse me, how would you like to use your baton on somebody? Yeah. And the sheriff's like, oh my God, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> so he grabs the baton back from the fucking valet kids and he's like, what's going on? And I'm like, well, I hate to be telling on people, but I got my family here. These little fucking punk ass kids are fucking screaming obscenities at these teenage girls. But yeah. even, I don't even really care about that, but they're spitting on people walking below. And he's like, oh, fuck, hell no. 
So I kind of go and sit down across the walkway or how everyone's walking right. and I'm sitting in a chair watching. Yeah. And, and as soon as they see the cop, like kind of peek around the corner, they back up from the deck to where they're like out of sight. Right. Like, oh shit. Then you see one of them peek over and the cop's just sitting there looking at him. And then you see him get on his little radio. Well, then we're sitting down. I'm like, all right, Jason, I think it's handled. And then you see the cop looking around. He's looking for me. Yeah. I, I'll bet. And then he spots me sitting there and he walks over to me. And now they're seeing him walk over to me. Right. So now it's obvious that I told on him, which at this point, fine, that's the way it unfolded. I don't give a fuck. So he's like, just to confirm, did they spit on you? I said, no, they didn't spit on me, but I watched them spitting on other people. Right. Yeah. I was like, no, if no, they didn't spit on me. I I wish I could tell you they did. I don't know if that's going to change anything. Um, And he was like, all right, I just wanted to, you know, clarify that. And so cop walks to the opposite side of the building. He's on his little radio. Now all four of them pointing down at me and and they're just staring with a shit-eating grin. And and Jason's like, they're looking at us. And Jason's like sitting in the chair too, like, bring it, man. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. I mean, but, and I guess these guys were 17, 18 years old, but then they all disappeared. And what we thought for a second that they were going to come down, I think the cop might have gone to the unit. Yeah. And then- as we're walking back, this kid is walking and he's wearing a shirt, a black shirt that says, I love sluts. <laughs> and my son, who's 10 years old, is like, what's that? And my mom and my wife's like, oh, that's just a kind of beer. That's funny. Because he wouldn't have understood what yeah. a slut was. He doesn't understand what a slut was. Right. So the last night there, my the night before my wife's birthday, Thursday night, my wife and Lauren go out for a night bike ride. They leave us with the kids. They're like, yeah, we're going to go for a bike ride. They go for a bike ride. They're gone like two fucking hours. They go to this place that's like three miles down the road on their bikes. Yeah. It's called the Steamboat Restaurant. My wife comes back and they're a little tipsy and she's like, guess who we ran into? We ran into Ron White. The comedian? She's like, yeah, fucking ran into Ron White. And he gave us these edibles. Wow. And there are these little Rice Krispie treats. And yeah. you smell them and you're like, damn, those things are strong. Yeah, that's the real deal. And so I could tell they've had a few shots. Ron White, not saying he wouldn't be down here for spring break, but yeah. is he down here for spring break? Right, yeah. Like, and just, I mean, Ron White is a party animal. He yeah. loves to drink. He no loves doubt. to get fucked up. So it's not out of the norm that he might be cruising around down here. Of course. So my wife starts handing out these fucking, these little treats. Yeah. And everyone gets fucking sick. Really? Oh, it fucks everybody up. Oh, no. Like, to the point of, like, they're not, like, feeling good. It's oh, like, no. Like, fucking the room is spinning shit. Oh, no. And I'm like, Ron White gave you those? She's like, yeah, this guy, Ron White, here's his card. And I'm like, not the fucking comedian, Ron That's White? That's too much. That's the only reason why we fucking took the things is because Ron, Ron White, White gave, gave it to, him to you. you. She's like, no, he's this dude that manages a bunch of restaurants down here. I was like, so you took these fucking edibles from some rando stranger. Named Ron White. Named Ron White. Didn't clarify. I wonder who this guy is. If you know Ron White, the restaurant manager. He's some guy. Some guy. He had a fancy card. Beautiful card. But he's handing out edibles. He's handing out edibles. And they were strong as fuck. (laughs) THC edibles? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Those can sneak up on you, especially if you've been drinking. And dude, like, they were small. Like, she gave us, like, I mean, Aaron gave me, like, a little teeny piece. And it was fucking ridiculous. Wow. Ridiculous. And they took, like, the whole thing? No. Everybody divided up. Like, everybody in the house took some. And then the next morning, everybody was like, I just couldn't sleep. I was like... And my wife, of course, got out of bed at like an hour after she laid down and went God. and threw up. Fucking, you come in and you say, man, we're just running and run. It's weird. Right. Isn't it Tater weird salad. Though, how we go on vacation and literally we go on vacation and, and and we do things that literally destroy our health. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so miserable. Well, if not you, you Ben, because you're on 75 hard and you were doing exercising and non-drinking. But that's me. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about. Most people, and me many times as well, typically standard operating procedure is I'm going to go and I'm going to freaking drink and I'm going to eat and I'm going to overindulge in everything. And ultimately, you end up feeling worse when you get back than when you left. 
It's so crazy. Oh, oh yeah. It's like you need a Like vac- how many times have you thrown up in your bedroom at your home? You know what I'm saying? How many times did you get up and just go puke? It never happens because you don't push yourself that far. You know what I'm saying? Me very rarely because I don't drink to that normal point of it's puking. Weird. Um, where my wife, on the other hand, not saying that she always throws up, but she's one of those ones that once she starts, she doesn't want the party to stop. Yeah. And normally I'm like, babe, it's time to go. Let's go. Yeah, I don't think you need any more. And then she's like, shut the fuck up. And she doesn't want to stop. And then and she ends up getting sick. Yeah. And it's like, uh, if you just yeah. fucking listen to me in the first place. You'd be fine. You wouldn't feel like a complete bag of assholes yeah. the next day. Thank you, Aaron and Ron White. Thank you, Ron and White. And not clarifying that it wasn't Ron Tater Salad White, who I love as a comedian and who I've hung out with. I've been to his house. Who gave the edibles? Okay, thanks for listening to the Man Fuse podcast. Join the show at manfuse.com. Also, you can join the show by hitting us up at 770-744-5227. And please share the show. Talk to you soon.